All right, guys, this is for you, the Dr. Zoom. We're talking about men's health. It is Men's Health Month. And uh, we want to bring to light some common issues and some ways that you can tackle them. So joining us this morning is Dr. Vincent Hanosh, a primary care physician with Trinity Health IHA Medical Group. Doctor, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So you're family medicine, doctor. So here's the first question. Our guys, should, should men be getting an annual physical, first of all? Yes, uh, it's very important, especially to have a, a primary care physician that you're established with so that you can, one, go to them with any problems you might have, but also to screen for various things that uh, we, can, we can help prevent, like cancer um, and also for um, heart disease. So, and you bring up an interesting topic, doctor, so when we talk about having a primary care physician, because a lot of people are going to the urgent care these days, yes, right? Yeah, because yeah. you can, let's face it, you can get, you can get the appointment, it's convenient, mm -hmm. maybe it's on your way home from work. Um, but that can be a problem because you don't have a relationship with a doctor. Yes, um, and that's that's a great point. And when you see an urgent care doctor, they're, you're seeing them f one time and they don't have your health history. If you have an established uh, relationship with a physician, they know you, they know what, uh, what issues you have, and they can treat you better that way. So, doctor, when men come in for their uh, physicals, and I guess we can talk about women too, but it's Men's Health Month, that's why we're focused on guys. But when they come in, what should they for sure be interested in or asking about and what can be discovered in these little these little annual physicals you can actually find some pretty serious stuff right yeah and I think it depends on the the age range um, that you're dealing with but for, for the most part you know for men specifically a lot of the times they come to me with prostate issues um, urinary issues maybe a testicular lump or they're starting to notice male pattern baldness mm. um, erectile dysfunction low testosterone symptoms but really uh, th those are men specific but non men specific but equally important are things like colon cancer um, mm -hmm. which men tend to sometimes neglect colonoscopy screenings right. um, and we have a lot of modalities to screen for those things but also heart disease which is the number one killer in men age over, mm. over the age of 45. And these are things when you go when you're paying attention and doing that annual physical mm -hmm. these are things that you might spot something hey let's get this checked and then it becomes yes. You get it on the calendar, and maybe yeah. you're, you, you know, maybe you're yeah. catching something early, right? Yeah, absolutely. And and there's been countless times where patients come to us for the first time, and their blood pressure is high, and and that is usually a warning and an indication that we we need to start looking at the heart closer, mm. um, and we maintain close follow up with those patients. Um, let's just talk real quick, doctor, about male menopause. Okay. Uh, male menopause is that is that a thing? First of all, yeah, it's 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 uh, it's similar. Yes, it is a thing, um, but it's similar to female menopause um, in that it's a constellation of symptoms. It's a low energy, it's low libido, it's mood swings essentially that can develop or depression and anxiety. And it's because as you um, begin to age over the age of 30, you lose about one to 2% testosterone per year. Okay. Uh, by the time you're in your 60s, um, that number could be very low, especially if your lifestyle is not where it needs to be. Um, and sometimes men will have those symptoms, they'll come to me and we'll try to modify their lifestyle so that they can try to improve their testosterone naturally. So. By improving lifestyle, we're talking about losing weight, exercising, those sorts mm -hmm. of things. Yeah, to absolutely. Get everything, get, to get the hormones in balance. Yeah, and, and doing resistance training. Um, you know, doing resistance training, something simple like that, can really increase your testosterone levels, but also getting adequate sleep. Mm. Um, social connections as well, very important. Um, maintaining a good relationship with your with your significant other or with your family. Um, we've There's research to show that those things can improve overall mood as well. Mm, that's a good, and we're going to talk more about that actually in our next hour. We're going to talk about men and mental health and important things to pay attention to. Dr. Hanosh will be sticking around with us, so thank you, doctor. If you have any questions about men's health, uh, guys, reach out to us on X with the hashtag The9. We'll take a look at your questions. All right, welcome back. The doctor is in. We're talking about men's health earlier. We talked about the body, and we can still talk about that a little bit too, but we're also talking about up here mental health and how it's really all connected, right? Doctor, joining us this morning, Dr. Vincent Hanosha, primary care physician with Trinity Health IHA Medical Group. Uh, doctor, let's talk about the, we are learning so much about how the mind and the body are connected. So yeah. what do you recommend to your male patients uh, for the purposes of this discussion about how that lifestyle, how you're treating your body, how that impacts your mental health? Yeah. and. Maintaining that that uh, you know the diet and exercise component that we talked about before is huge for maintaining mental health and helping like 
de-stress um, and, and kind of getting that, that anxiety released and giving it an outlet. But more so than anything with men specifically, they don't tend to come to the doctor to talk about these kinds of things mm. because they feel like some sort of stigma. They feel like, you know, it's probably going to get better. But what ends up happening is they end up coping with things that they shouldn't be coping with, like mm. things like alcohol, things like uh, tobacco, uh, or other substances, and those cause other issues in the line. So walk me through it a little bit, doctor. If, if a guy comes to you, and um, really, at all age groups, you should be getting that annual physical. So you're yeah. in there for annual physical, you say, no, I feel fine, and then you do a little bit of a screening and you recognize maybe there's some depression or anxiety going on here? Yeah, so uh, for most patients that come into the office, we start with, a, with what they call a PHQ questionnaire, which is uh, essentially a depression screening, okay. um, and also an anxiety screening called the GAD-7. And these are validated ways or tools that we can isolate if there is any risk factors for depression or anxiety, and then we could formally develop a, a treatment plan uh, by opening up that, that discussion, mm. opening, up that, up, opening up that line of communication with the patients. And then what happens next? Is it, um, is there, sometimes is there, uh, are there simple steps to treat this, or how, how do you kind of stop it in, tr in its tracks but not have to, you know, overwhelm somebody yeah. with the, um, taking medication or yeah. doing a bunch of other steps? Medications are one option to treating depression and anxiety, but, but another option is, is getting the mental health uh, therapist the, uh, you know, on board mm -hmm. early because early treatment is the best way for us to prevent this stuff from worsening um, where you end up needing like a crutch, something right. like a substance or something like that. Uh, let's talk about this testosterone, so male menopause. Um, uh, how does that, it, it, your testosterone levels are dropping naturally as yeah. men age. Yeah. Um, but usually that can be sort of mitigated, right? Yeah, and it, really that lifestyle is, is so important for testosterone specifically, and not, not a lot of people realize this, but your testosterone starts to wane one to 2% every year, starting at the age of 30, that's after you peak. Um, and then people start to notice changes to their energy levels, mood changes, um, libido issues, and that's when they first come to us. But we tell them, like, the first thing you should do is, you know, we don't even test testosterone initially when mm. we see them. We just tell them to change their lifestyle, make sure that you're exercising, make sure that you're eating right, um, and we give them a diet plan, and we give them an exercise plan, try to set them up with, with the right tools so that they can do it naturally on their own without having to do a medication or something like that. And that's really the focus is, and we had a story just uh, making news today that when, when you eat fatty foods, that that leads to less of those feel-good hormones in your yeah. brain, and it makes you feel worse uh, for many different reasons, physically and mentally. But that's really the interesting place we are, right? When it yeah. comes to medicine, is understanding simple things that what mm -hmm. we're eating and what we're yeah. doing yeah. can impact everything, right? Yeah, your, your your body is your temple, essentially, right? What you put into it, you, you know, you can feel. And, you know, processed foods, simple carbohydrates, uh, things that come out of a package or a can, I usually advise not to consume. Yeah. Whole food, plant-based diets are really the best way to go about it. Healthy grains, lean proteins, healthy fats, fruits and vegetables um, on every single plate whenever you're, you're consuming anything. Those can go a long way in, in helping with normal hormones. Um, and there's, there's we, in recent times, we've seen that there's certain processed foods that contain endocrine disrupting hormones, mm. which could potentially lead to a low testosterone level. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So it's it, it sounds a little overwhelming, but mm -hmm. really it's it's simple stuff that yeah. we all are, are learning every day and trying yeah. to adhere to. Real quick, Doctor, I know we got to go, but alcohol. Where what's the current standing on alcohol? Alcohol consumption is in good. It's it's never really good in general, right, but right. in moderation um, is is really what we tell people. Um, if if it's affecting your daily daily life, yeah. if you're noticing that you're requiring alcohol more so to you know go through your day, that's usually a problem. Right. And, you have to intervene at that point. Yeah, keep an eye on the consumption, especially during the summer. Yes. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, all right, doctor, thank you. Good thank stuff. You. We appreciate you.